well <laughs> if you haven't discovered that yet. Um, so all of our class material is at superpython.party because that's where normal things go. Um, so if you have not opened up that URL, go ahead and do that now. Um, don't read ahead because it spoils the surprise. Um, that was funny and everyone laughed. Ha ha, we're starting out so well. Um, okay, uh, another thing I want to explain really quick. Um, we have four brilliant TAs today. If you are a TA, raise your hand and look brilliant. Heyo. Um, they are here to help and they are wonderful. Um, our helping system are these little stickies. Heyo. Um, you should have got a sticky if you haven't. Please raise your hand and someone will come around and give you a sticky. Um, also, if your sticky is not speaking to you in the color that it is, I have many. It is important. Um, this was also a joke and you all laughed. Ha ha. Uh, we'll get there. It's fine. So if you need help at any point in the class, put up your sticky. The TAs are looking out for them um, and someone will come along and rescue you from whatever danger has come your way. So, what are we doing? Um, we're here to learn Python. That's part of the goal of today, so <laughs> let's hope that works out. Um, we're also going to take some time to engage in self-care, um, to learn some things that are scientifically proven to boost happiness, which is awesome for many reasons, mostly because frowning makes your face look weird and makes other people uncomfortable. Um, it doesn't, you can frown all you want, it's totally fine. Um, so yes, the first page of the website um, in the, what are we doing here? Does everyone see that? Okay, there's a link at the bottom of the page to download some files. It's gonna be a zip file called files because I'm creative and um, we're gonna need that on your machine eventually. Not right this very second, but eventually. So um, if you don't get it, don't panic. We'll come back to it later. Let's see. Okay. I think we're kind of like just gonna do class and stuff now which you all think is funny because we're friends now. Okay, here we go. <laughs> that was a good laugh. Okay, so, oh, I'm scaring you. It's fine. Um, the first thing that we're gonna look at is called the REPL. Um, REPL stands for Read, Execute, Print, Loop. This does not matter for anything. I'm just telling you so you know. You can call it reptile eats pizza loop and it won't like change the way you code. Um, but what it does is it allows us to kind of play with Python a little bit um, without having files or anything else. And this is um, in your uh, command line prompt or terminal if you're on a Mac um, or something else you call it if you're on a something else. So the way we um, get into the Python REPL uh, for my machine, this is what we do, Python 3.6. And then you know that you're in the REPL because of those three little side carrots, arrows, I forget the names of things, but they are hungry reptiles. So this is how we remember that we're in the reptile. Nope, that's not what it's called, <laughs> we're in the REPL uh, because we have our little friendly things there. Um, now to get out of the REPL, we can do this exit, open, close. Um, this is what I do because I always forget the key command. It's something, definitely. Um, nope, not that one. This is what I do all the time. There we go. Um, control D on Macs, um, and in the curriculum it shows what that is. So if you're on a Windows machine, we're gonna do this. Instead, PY space dash 3.6, and that should get you in there. And you should see this Python, um, ooh, sorry, um, Python 3.6 when you get into the REPL. Okay. Now we're going to get into the REPL. Can you do that? This is all we're going to do right now. I want you to get into the REPL and see your hungry reptile and then get out of the REPL. 
Um, this is sometimes a tricky thing because it is tricky. Um, and so I want you to do that in and out and have a good time. And then if you get stuck, put up a sticky. We're just going to take a minute to do this. Who needs another minute? Okay. I see we're getting help here. So I'm going to move on. You will be able to catch up. Don't worry. Okay. Now we've been able to get in and out of our REPL, which is wonderful. Okay. Um, what we're going to do now, I want to just mention a sneaky thing. Um, if you press the up arrow, it, it'll bring up the other stuff that you typed just recently. And so if you see that magically appear, it's not because I'm amazing, it's because of the up arrow key. So just wanted to let you know that. Okay, are we in the REPL? Yes, good. Okay, so the first thing that we're going to start with are strings. Um, strings are basically just kind of words and numbers and anything can go in a string. It's going to be in... Um, it's just a, th a thing that we can store. This is not very eloquent. You're welcome. Okay, so we're going to start with this. This is just affirmation that I need at this point. Um, oh, no. It gives us an error, and it says that Melanie is not defined, which throws me into an existential crisis because I'm pretty sure I am. Um, and the reason why it does that is when we store strings they need to be in quotation marks. Ah. And then it gives us the same thing that we typed back. So because we're in the REPL, it's reading what we uh, typed, and it's executing whatever that code is, and then it's printing out the result of that code, and then it's ready for us to do something again. Um. OK. We can use single quotes. Oh. Oops, those are double quotes. We're going to go opposite. We can use single quotes. What's this going to do? Error? Yep. They have to be matchies. That's the technical term. Um, if we have, say, a contraction in English, right, like, don't freak out. Oh, goodness. Does anyone know what this is going to do? Right. So if we want to do, if we need an, an apostrophe in there, we can come back. We have to have double quotes on the outside. Yes? OK. We can also concatenate strings, um, which is a fancy word for smashing them together. I don't know why I didn't come up with all the words of things. Um, we do that with the plus operator. because it is super fun. But now it's super fun, which we all know is not a word. So if we want to have an appropriate space in there, we can put it in there. Yay, that's much more fun. Or we can go here. So you've got to have all your spaces and such in there exactly how they should be printed out. OK. Um, we can also deal with integers. Helpful. 
they don't need quotes. They're just little fellows, right, like that. One, two, that's another one. Four is also another number. I have children, so I've been teaching this, and now I know. Um, what if... Bad juju. Was that the thing I actually heard just now? Is it really what you said, or did my brain just fill it in because that's what I do? That was... Hey, oh, that's awesome. Um, yes, bad juju, I think, yes. So we can't smash together an integer and a string. Um, any ideas on how to fix that? How do we do that? Okay. Um, who thinks this will work? Who thinks it won't work? Who loves being silent like a cricket in the night? No one. You don't like answering I, any of the questions. Fine. Yay, it works. There we go. Okay. Perfect. Time to play. What I want you to do is open up your REPL. And that'll be with the hungry reptile. We know that. It's totally locked in. Um, and usually what people do at this point in learning is hello world. Has anyone seen that before? Right. We're not going to do that. It's awesome because the world is great and you want to say hello to it. But this is a slightly different class just a little. And so what I want you to do is get into the REPL and type some strings that make you happy. Just anything. I like butterflies. Um, peanut butter is terrific. Um, and make sure to say at least one thing, one little beautiful comment, uh, compliment for yourself this morning, whatever it is, whatever you feel proud of this morning, I would like you to type that at the REPL. I'm going to give you mm, three minutes for this.
Okay. Um, for the folks that came in a little bit later, um, I wanted to point out that our website is really seriously super py python.party. That's like the real website. I'm not even going to send you, like you're not going to get rickrolled if you go there or anything. Um, although it would be funny if you did. Uh, okay, so, and I also realized that I didn't tell you anything about myself, which is funny. Um, I could just be a stranger, which would be amazing. Uh, my name is Melanie Crutchfield. Um, I'm from San Diego. I uh, have been working in Python and Django for a few years. I made a service um, called 5up that sends five happy texts every day. Um, I can show you what the website looks like here. Um, well, it doesn't have to be five, one to five. Uh, it's a free service if you're in the US. Um, it's non-existent service if you're not in the US. You're welcome. Um, and I like it. And I made those drawings. And that thing has a whatever. Anyway, um, so that's me. Back to, oh, there it is. Anyone having trouble getting to the website? OK. Um, also, if you came in late, there is a link on one of the very first pages um, that says files to download files. You will need that at some point in the course. OK. Who had fun at the raffle? Yay. There's three hands. The raffle's amazing. Um, let's see. OK, and I want to remind you also, if you get stuck in any way, shape, or form, put your sticky up like this. Um, we have four beautiful people at the back of the room that are crazy knowledgeable um, and would love to come over and help you out. So um, if you have not been able to get into the REPL, um, put up a sticky right now, because I want you to be with us. Yes? No? Maybe? OK. Cool. Moving on. Arithmetic. Math. That's a thing we can do with Python. Um, so we can say 2 plus 2, which equals 4, because Python is smart. Um, so we can add integers. We can add floating point numbers. We can subtract. We can multiply. We can also divide. Um, and when we divide two integers, it gives us back a floating point number. If you would like it to round and not, oops, not give you that floating point number, you use two slashes instead of just the one. We can also raise things to the power of other things like that. OK, we're going to play again, because playing is fun. So if you're not in your REPL, I want you to get into the REPL. And I just want to remind you, this is not in the REPL. Um, in Windows, you'll see just a single caret. Um, in other you know, Mac, um, you'll see this dollar sign when you get into the REPL. We see our hungry reptile, OK? In and out, in and out. All right, do some math, anything you like. If you look on the material, there's also um, some things to look at. Uh, round, so I want you to take a look at that. And try to guess what's going on. I'll give you a couple minutes.
Okay. That was math. Math is amazing. Um, we're going to move on now. I remember I said that we're doing Python today, but also some self-care and some happy work. So if you're on the website, you can go forward. And we have a page called Happy Work Number One with an emoji. It's amazing. Um, so there's this really interesting work by a man named Sean Aker. Um, he says basically that the research shows that if we are happier, we are more productive, um, we can stay more focused, and basically happiness leads to success instead of the other way around, which is if we're successful, we will then be happy, right? We'll do a thing and that will make us happy. But his research shows that if we are happy, we become more successful, right? Um, the things that we're going to do today might sound a little bit like hippie nonsense. I acknowledge that. Um, but like I said, it is scientifically driven. So in your mind, if you need to put like a lab coat on your hippie in order to engage today, I'm into that. Whatever you need to do. And I want you to try. Um, I realize that this is different and a little peculiar, and I like that. And it is good for you. So take your happy medicine, for goodness sakes. Um, so the first thing we're going to do, and again, this is scientifically driven, your lab coat hippie will be very happy with you. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is gratitudes. Scanning life for things to be grateful for changes your brain and makes it more awesome. I think that's basically what the scientific paper on that says. Happy gratitude equals awesome brain. Um, it teaches your brain to look for good things and to mark them. Um, our brains are really, really great at looking for bad things because if there was a ferocious dinosaur that was going to eat us, we should notice that. Um, there are fewer ferocious dinosaurs today. I don't know if you noticed. Um, but our brain is, needs training in looking for good things. So we're going to take some time, just a little bit, for each of us to find something that we are grateful for. We're going to try to find three somethings. Anything that pops into your mind is fine. Um, and we're going to do this at the REPL. So make sure your little hungry reptile is there. And type in three different things that you can be grateful for this morning. I'll give you a second for that.
So the magic of gratitudes is that you can do it anytime, for real, when you're going to the bathroom or whatever. <laughs> I don't know why that was the thing that came to mind. I'm so sorry. Um, but it's this magical little boost that you can take with you whenever you need it, which is great. Okay. We are gaining speed. We are going to look at variables. So like the rest of the programming languages, um, Python also does variables. Um, did anyone notice what I did? I wasn't in the REPL. Where's my hungry lizard thing? I only point it out because it's tricky. Like, I think very highly of all of you, but it happens frequently to everyone. So um, I just want to keep pointing it out. So variables. Now that I'm back in my REPL. So we assigned 4 to x. If we multiply x by 4, we get 16. You can use anything you like for the name of your variable, almost anything. I'm sure that you will find a way to break that. Um, but it doesn't matter what you call it. In your code, it's helpful um, to be naming things that have a meaning to them. Um, this is the number of bunnies I have. That's the number of kitties I have. That's a cute name for a hedgehog, and that's the number of them that I have. Any guesses on what we're going to get here? Four. You all need to quiet down because my ears are hurting now. <laughs> okay, I'm just declaring it. Right. So if we just shove it in there, we're telling Python, hey, remember this is what this thing is. And then it goes, cool. End. Like, it's not going to give us anything. But if we s ask it what is in there, it says four. I don't actually own all these animals. I just want to be clear. <laughs> Because now you all are like, that weird farm lady was doing lots of things. Um, I, I don't have them. But I do. It's like a dream, a goal of mine to have a hedgehog. I'm not even going to lie. Look, I have a stuffed one. Okay, this is too much information. Anyway, moving on. Um, there's a thing. Now, the reason why I wanted you all to have uh, Python 3.6 is because there's a fancy thing in Python 3.6 um, called f-strings, and I love them very much. So we're going to take a look at them. Um, let's see. We're going to see if I end up spelling any of this correctly. So this is how we have been doing things. Right, remember when we were concatenating strings before? And now it's like, ooh, we've got all this stuff. We need to make sure that we get a space in there. Right? Oh, no. What has happened? Oh, I called it yeared. That's not correct, y'all. No one even stopped me. I see how it is now. It's cool. Yay! That was like a lot of work, right? And when I, you know, before f strings existed and I was trying to do things this way, I would always forget spaces, like everything would end up looking weird. Because that, there's so many things going on in there. Um, I don't like it. So when f strings came along, I was like, the world is full of magic and hedgehogs. So here's how we can do that instead. We already have conference and year without a D. Um, defined. So instead of doing all of that nonsense, we can do this.
Did I spell it wrong? Oh, thank you. Look, you all love me. Thank you. Okay, so that's awesome. So you put an F at the beginning for fantastic or whatever it stands for. Um, and then we have our quotes. Um, and this will work also, single or double quote, as long as they're matching. Um, and then we have those variables that we defined earlier, and we put them in those little curly brackets. And you'll notice that I put a space in there, like a normal space, and it's like, cool, there's a space there, right? And so it just kind of does everything all nice and tidy for us. Who has a question about this? Someone does. Who has a feeling in their heart about anything? Oh. Thing. Nope, that's a T. I, I honestly don't know. T A is in the back. F? Formatting. There we go. That's more sense than fantastic. Yes. Uh, quotes? Yeah? Um, at least I think. That's a good question. Let's just, like... Oh, like that? Open, close? We'll find out. Mm, no, you can't do that. So, we can try this. This is fun. That's probably not going to do anything. Backslash, let's try that. Anyone in the back? So then it's not empty? Heyo. That was really fun. The F strings? Yes, exactly. It does not work in two, not even a little. And I think it also doesn't even work in three, five. Um, so this was like a super fancy pants thing that's pretty recent. Okay. Moving on. Okay. Who is on the website? Should be all the hands. Who's not on the website? No? OK. Everyone's able to access the website at this point? Or no? OK, cool. Um, on the website, we are now going to get into more play first concepts. So there are several exercises here. These um, are a little tiny bit more involved. Not, not an amazing amount more involved, but a little bit more involved than the ones that we have been doing. So take your time. You can also come back and play, do any of the things that we've done up to this point. The point in these little exercises are just to get you comfortable, just to you know, try it over and over, mess up. Hopefully, all of us are making mistakes. Um, and then we'll get that to like click in, OK? So I'll give you a couple minutes to do that. OK. Ha. 
That was correct. You super did not raise your hands. I see, I got eyes. The point is, you're all capable of raising your hands. Please do this as much as possible. And if you're someone who answers questions frequently, like you are verbose and expressive, um, hold back just a second. If you're someone who does not enjoy asking questions, I beg you, stretch yourself today. Ask a question. Use your arms. This is a fun and safe space. Unless you don't raise your hands and then you get a class scolding. Just kidding. Okay. I do want to show this. Did anyone play with this? Assigning a variable twice? Did anyone do this? No. Who did not do this? Ha ha. Amazing. Okay. What happens? What is x going to be? Banana. Yep. So if you assign a variable twice, it only remembers the last thing. So if your mother named you 10 when you were born, and then I name you banana because nothing makes sense, your name is therefore banana forever. OK. More hippie stuff. Um, we're going to take just a bit um, to engage in mindfulness meditation. I know that this might be a stretch for some of you. Remember that we are trying new things today, and we super love it. And you can stop doing all of these things when you leave the room, I promise. I'm not going to like follow you around and be like, how mindful are you today? Because that's super weird. Um, and I'm normal sauce. Um, so a couple things about mindfulness meditation. A, it's awesome. I will tell you why. Um, for me, my head buzzes a lot, like bees on their birthday um, in Bermuda. I like alliteration. Um, so it's, it's helpful to kind of just have nothing going on in there for a while, as much as I can. So when I do mindfulness meditation, I, I try to empty my mind of thoughts. Um, this is very, very hard. Um, sometimes I like to visualize putting a thought on the leaf and letting that leaf float down a river just to say goodbye to it and bring back my attention to my breath. So we do have something to anchor us, which is our breath. So the other thing about mindfulness meditation, which I find fascinating, um, when we breathe, we're going to try to breathe with our bellies. That means like when you take breaths and you don't want to have this going up and down, you want to have your belly going out and in. You can put your hand on your belly if that is helpful. So, but the reason we do that um, is because it makes you look cool. Um, also, because in your belly, you have your vagus nerve. And the vagus nerve is part of what engages your parasympathetic nervous system. Your sympathetic nervous system, right, is the one that's like, ah, oh, dinosaur, and then we have to freak out. Or like, oh, weird tweet on Twitter because everything's scary. Um, that happens all the time. So your uh, sympathetic nervous system is kind of always telling you that things are freaky. Um, your parasympathetic nervous system, however, is responsible for, like, chill out. It's what engages the systems in your body that tell you to rest and rejuvenate. Um, it is a good thing for bringing everything down a little bit. Um, and of course, that reduces stress. Um, mindfulness meditation and um, breathing with your belly is used a lot of times for, um, for people that do have chronic stress. So um, also, it helps with anxiety. Those are the two things that kind of are, are in there. So now, with mindfulness meditation, um, there's no like being good at it. There's trying it. And you try as much as you can. Um, if you ended up incorporating a mindfulness meditation um, process into your day, that would be so beautiful. Um, but you don't have to do t 20 minutes. You don't have to do 10 minutes. You can take one mindful breath each day, and that's still something, right? Um, and it is just the one breath can be extremely rejuvenating. 
So what we're going to use today, we're going to do two minutes, just two. Um, you're welcome to close your eyes or keep them open. Um, try not to stare at someone directly because it's weird. Um, so two minutes. Um, I have a guide, um, and I linked to it in the class materials. Um, I use an app called Breathing Zone, um, and it's available on um, most platforms. And it's just a little little thing that, that tells us when to breathe in and when to breathe out. Um, usually for um, adults, uh, an optimum breathing rate is between 6.5 and 7 breaths per minute. So that's what we're going to do. It starts out a little bit faster, and then it will slow down, and then it will, whoa, hey um, and then it will stop entirely. So I'm going to kind of hold this, and we're, we're going to hope it works out pretty well. We'll hold it near my mouth. Um, are we ready? Yes. Okay. Here we go. Can we hear? Who liked that? Okay. I like it too. Okay. We're going to work for about 20 more minutes, and then we'll have a quick break, and um, then we'll come back to all the fun. So what we've been doing so far is working at the REPL, right? Um, it's a little bit limiting because we're just basically writing one code or one line of code at a time. So what we can do is move out into scripts. Um, now, give me just a moment. Um, so this is where we're going to need the files that we downloaded earlier. Um, if you do not have the files, please put a sticky up so that a brilliant TA can come and help you. Um, I'm going to need to change directories here.
Okay. We're going to need our code editors now. Oh. oh, no. Sorry, I did something bad. I have a problem. I'll get it back. There we go. Maybe. <laughs> okay. I've almost done it. Okay. Thank you for waiting, y'all. Um, can everyone open this file? Now you'll see there was a little bit of a mistake. So what I want to show you is what happens when we run this file. Okay, so we've been in the REPL, and now we're gonna be running files instead from the command line prompt. So to do this, now this will get us into the REPL. Oh, yes. Oh, thank you. Who needs it bigger? Okay. Okay, um, now this will pop us into the REPL. What we can do instead, um, and you'll see that, I wanna show you this first, sometimes it can be a little bit tricky um, navigating your machine in the command line prompt. So you'll see if you're in the same directory that our exercise files are in, 
if you type um, ls, or I think on Windows it's dir, um, it'll show you all of the files that are there. Um, and it's important because as we run it, now you can type the full path if you have um, the files saved elsewhere, um, but it's easier to be in the path so that way you don't have to type that whole thing out. Okay, so we are going to run our file called birds that we just saw there. Mm -hmm. But we're going to run it with .py. Did everyone see that? So let's look back at the file. What do we have here? Oh, thank you. Did anyone before, um, when we were talking about strings and in the exercise, we asked how you do a multi-line string? Did anyone discover this? Right, triple quotes lets you do um, a multi-line string. So, but when we come back, <coughs> and we look at, we run this file, let's make sure we all saw that. We run the file, we get nothing. And that's because when we're in the REPL, right, it reads the code that we put in, um, it executes that code, and then it prints out the results of that code. When we're running files, it does not do that for us. Um, and so what we need to do, once I get over there, there we go, is we'll use a function. And this is the print function. So we put print at the beginning, open parentheses, and then we have our string, and then we close it at the end of our string. It's going to print everything that we see there. So if we run our program again, uh-oh, did anyone catch what I did? No? I didn't save it. It's important. Now we printed out something from Bob Ross. Who remembers who Bob Ross is? Yeah, okay. I linked his YouTube channel in the curriculum because, you know, Bob Ross, he's awesome. Okay. All right. Oh, yes. How to run the script? Yes. Yes, exactly. OK. So here's our file. So this is in a code editor. OK. And so I put the print function in and then saved it. And then if we come over to the REPL, we type. Python 3.6, right? And if, I, or I'm sorry, we're not in the REPL because we don't see the arrows, right? Um, so if we just did this, it would put us into the REPL, which is not what we want. What we want to do is tell Python to run this file, birds.py. So, and you remember if I list out everything that's in the directory that I'm in now, You'll see that birds.py there. So that's why we can do this. Python 3.6, birds.py. That's, it's what the file is called. So you should have probably a directory called files, since that's what you downloaded. And within that directory, there's birds.py. And this is how, since I'm in the same directory, um, this is how I can run that, Python 3.6, and then we run the script. I would like everyone to take a moment to try that so that we know that we can run 
external Python files. And when you run into trouble, put up a sticky. I'm just going to wait a minute. You'll know that you've successfully run it when you see that quote. All right, raise your capable hands if you were able to run the script. Good. Okay, if you were not able to run the script, please put a sticky on your computer and someone will come around and help you. Okay, we're going to take another quick break for happiness because that's what we do. Okay, so one of the other things um, that Sean mentions in his work um, that can really help boost your happiness is giving compliments to other people, saying nice things to other people, doing things for other people. Um, there was an interesting study a while back, and I, I wish I knew where this stuff was so that I can link it to you, but um, there, they found that money can make you happy, if someone gives it to you and then you give it to someone else, <laughs> you're, if you go and buy a $5 coffee with a $5 bill, you'll be like, mm, this is tasty coffee. But if you go and buy a coffee for someone else who preferably enjoys coffee, like it brings much more enjoyment to you. Giving to other people makes you feel good. Um, also, reaching out and complimenting other people in your social networks is very helpful for each of us individually. Um, it makes us feel connected. You know that you made somebody else feel good and you feel less alone. So an easy way to do this is on Twitter if you're a Twitter person or if you're an email person, you can do email. Or if you write cards and give them to pigeons to deliver, that also works just fine. So what um, when I'm at my best, I make a goal to message one person a day and tell them what they mean to me, that they're wonderful or inspiring or kind or that I'm grateful for something that they've done. Um, it is a good practice. It may stretch you if you are not in the habit of expressing your feelings, but that's what it, we are here for. So we're going to take just maybe four minutes. Four minutes. I'm going to give you seven minutes. We're going to do seven minutes, and then we'll take a break. Um, so whatever your mode of communication is, hop in. Think of something lovely to say to someone else and do that right now. You can do it. I believe in you.
you, just so you know. I'm not letting myself off the hook.
I hope that was very lovely and life-giving. Um, keep at it if you can, if you can remember to. Um, one thing I want to mention, two things, is that um, I've been tweeting with Python for Humans, hashtag Python for Humans, and it's fun. So if you want to do that also, Twitter is fun. So there's that. The other thing I wanted to mention um, is that I have mental illness. It's something I like to talk about openly. There is a very good chance that about five of us in here have depression because that's how numbers work. Um, if that is you, feel free to talk to me if you'd like. I'm always um, up to be a listening ear and I do tweet about it openly. Um, I can chat about drugs, like whatever it is that you um, want for support. I'm totally down for that. Also on Twitter, um, I've been tweeting out anti-depression plan because it's good to have a plan. And all of these things that we're talking about today, not only are they good for boosting your happiness, but they're also good for protecting you from depression. So if that is a thing, let me know. You are released to go nourish yourself with food. Never, five minutes, I don't know, sorry. <laughs> it's 30 minutes, yeah? Yes, TAs were, yes, 30 minutes, 30 minutes. So that means uh, 10.50.
quiet again. Y'all were like, we like talking. And then the music went down, and you're like, we're silent forever. OK, a couple of things. I hope you had a lovely break. I hope you were nourished. I meant to tell you to exercise during your break, because that's one of the things that is good for us. Um, so you could have like done some push-ups. That's normal, just in the hallway or whatever. Um, but there's my, I, it's a weak sell for exercise because I hate it. I realize this. I'm sorry. But you all, when you're being a better person than I am, you should exercise because science and all kinds of things. So there's that. I want to really quickly say a couple of things. Um, this part where we're going in and out of the REPL or when we're um, kind of navigating through files on our machines. This is a tricky part. It's tricky for most people all the time. It's also a little bit confusing that I'm in the terminal and then I go over to my code editor and then we come back to the terminal and run the file. So if you're like, what's happening? That's normal um, and you should be excited about your Ma-ness. And if that happens and you are starting to feel like you're getting behind, or even if you don't feel like you're getting behind but you would like to stop feeling that confused feeling, put up a sticky. Um, always put up a sticky. The TAs back there are brilliant and they're looking sleepy and also lazy. So if you could make them run around, like you could even put it up and then when they come be like, oh, just kidding, I figured it out. And then they like will be all awake and whatever. Don't tell them I said that. They can't hear me. They can't. They're in the back of the room. Anyway, so um, so I'm going to do a couple of things again just because I want us to see it um, and think about it. Are we in the REPL? No. How do we know? No alligator. Yep. Um, well, on Windows, you might have one alligator, but that's not enough. You need three. Um, this. Now we're in the REPL. Yes? Um, exit. I always type exit. Again, I think on, what is it, control day? Oh my gosh, I remembered. Yay. Um, so there's that. We are, I want to look at, um, now I was saying that if we're in the files directory, then we'll be able to say Python 3.6 or on Windows, uh, py-3.6, and then the name of the file. Now this works because I'm in the same directory. And we can see that because if I type ls, then it's going to list all of the files that are in that directory. Um, I can change directories back one level. That's what this dot dot is. And then I can do another um, kind of poke around in that directory. Every time I do ls or on Windows dir, it'll show you what is happening, what, what is in the directory that you're in. So it's kind of, it's a little bit of a shift if you're used to using, like um, on a Mac, the Finder, or if you're using like a visual explorer of the files on your machine, which is what I typically do. Um, it's, it's hard to kind of like make the switch. So if you've been programming for a while and you're just new to Python, this might be something that you're familiar with. Um, but if you're new to programming in general and new to the uh, terminal and the command line, this will be confusing. So it's all right. So um, what we can do now, so CD is change directory. Is it the same on Windows? Anyone know? OK, good. Um, Windows is like a mystery to me. Uh, so we can change directory. Um, handy thing is you can, this is what I've been doing. The, um, oh, hey, oh. Uh, you have to have like the, a real directory that's there. There we go. Um, one thing you can do is Python 3.6. This makes it look like I can type super fast, but I can't. It's just t tab will kind of look for, we have a couple of files that start with B. Um, so since we have two, it's like, I don't know which one you want. If I press tab again, it'll show me all the files that start with B. So that's helpful. 
and then I can you I can do I and then it fills in birds is this making sense is this making anyone feel a little bit more comfortable with the terminal is it anyone sleepy full of muffins you laugh but you don't raise your hand okay who has a question about the terminal Yes. Tab. Yeah. Um, so again, Python 3.6, B. It's like, which B? And then it tells you which ones. OK. And then if I do I, or if I were to do R, it would fill in the next, if there's a logical one that is the only one that can be that, it fills it in for you. Um, everyone remember possibly that if we do the up arrow, it's just cycling back through a bunch of stuff that I just did. And it does that for a long time. Like I did something a long time ago. Okay, but you'll notice also that it's only running through the commands that I did while we were at the terminal, not in the REPL. I can't remember if it remembers. Yeah, look at that. Da, 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 da. So when you go back into your REPL, um, you can go back and, and grab other stuff that you did previously. Okay, next question about the terminal. Yes. On Windows, it's D-I-R for directory or directions, something. Next question. Yes. Right. Um, so you can see on, on my machine here, it says MacBook Pro and then files. That's where I'm at. Are you on, what's, what platform are you on? Windows, Mac, okay, yay. PWD, Windows are just fine, I'm sorry. I'm sorry about my very obvious bias. PWD is uh, present working directory, and so this is the path where you're at. Um, if you downloaded files, um, they're probably in your downloads folder. That's typically where it, it dumps. Um, maybe desktop or whatever, but um, so you'll do, if I do this and I just go back to, like this is my root, if I want to get back to where I, I was, um, change directory, and then here we go again, documents, right, I can tab and it fills it, fills it in. Sometimes I forget how I named the file or the directory, so that's helpful. Um, and then I can see that I'm in the right directory. Next question. This is fun. I just say next question and then questions appear. I didn't know that it was like a computer and you can just tell it. Yes, no, okay. Um, who struggled a little bit with the switching back and forth between the terminal and your code editor? Yeah, yeah, it's a little bit, I, I find it confusing, right? Because sometimes we're in the REPL and we can type our code interactively here, but we're not gonna type a full PY file, like a full program or a script in the REPL. We're gonna do that in a separate file and then we're, or I'm sorry, we're gonna do that in a separate file and then when we want to run the program, will be in the terminal, in the command line, and we'll say Python 3.6, and then tell it which file to run. So we have a couple of things kind of going on here. Um, so I use Sublime Text. This, um, this is a, a little fancy thing in Mac that you can do. There's probably something similar that you can do in Windows. Um, but this shows me where it, where it is, so I know it's in the files directory that I just navigated to. Everyone see that? And so since I'm in this directory, so this is where I edit my code, 
when I want to come back and run the code, we come back to the command line, and then we can run the file. So we type Python 3.6 or on Windows py space dash 3.6, and then the name of the file, enter, and it executes everything that's in the file. Is that a good review? Does everyone feel happy? Gassy? It happens. We're human people. That's like the name of the class and stuff. OK, good. Um, if you get stuck on any of that, stick up a sticky. Okie dokie, artichokies. Everyone says that. Let's see where we left off. Mm. OK. Now that we have done that, I'm going to give you an opportunity. We've gone over this review, right, of we've got our text editor. We're editing our code in there, and then we're running the code from the terminal. So we're not going to be in the REPL right now. If you see your hungry reptile, you're in the wrong place, and you want to exit or use the key command that I can never remember, you're welcome. Um, so I want you to, there are some exercises here. Um, time to play scripts is what you're looking for. Um, I think this little buddy is down here. This. So I want you to write a program that says your name. This will be a nice gentle introduction to looking at your own file. And then we'll have a cheerleader. It says f-strings are ferociously fantastic. It says it at the bottom of the page. I wrote that. Anyway, uh, so I'm going to give you about five minutes to work on this. When you get stuck, you... That was your cue to say in chorus, put up a sticky. When you get stuck, you... Put up a sticky. Amazing. Okay, five minutes. Okay, here we go. Who figured out how to uh, print something a bunch of times? How did we do this? Oh, good. How did we do it? Sorry? A while loop. Come on now, I haven't taught that. Someone who didn't know things before they came in. Anyone else? Times 25. Yeah. Isn't that cool? You can, like, multiply stuff. I mean, all it does is, like, keep yelling at you, but it's awesome if you give it something nice to yell at you. Who wants to share the nice thing they said about themselves? Somebody wants to. Yep that. I hope it was, I'm incredibly attractive and kind and wonderful, and everyone wants to be my friend, because I feel like that applies to most all humans. So, okay. Functions. This is what we're going to look at right now. So, remember, um, okay, I'm going to go into the REPL right now, okay? You do that like this, right? Oops, not like that. Like this. And there is our hungry reptile. Okay. So this thing this print, open and close parentheses, this is a function. 
And you'll notice, like, it's, it's kind of interesting that if I say hi, it gives me back, like, a string in the REPL. But if I print it, it doesn't give me back a string. I just think that's kind of interesting. So, but this, the thing, open parentheses, close parentheses, that is a function. Okay? Um, and there are lots of functions built into Python. We can also write our own functions. We're going to look at some of the built-in ones. So, this is my name. It is still Melanie. And we can say length. We can get the length of a thing with len. It has seven characters. Yay! Um, let's see. We can also get the types of things with functions, um, which can be useful, especially when you're troubleshooting. Um, if you're like, wow, remember when we couldn't um, concatenate uh, the number three and a string because they were different? If you didn't know that three without the, without the quotation marks was an integer, you could find its type. Um, so if I do type x, it'll tell me it's an integer. And if we do, oops. And this is a float, right? y is 2.5, x is 5. And if we do a type of my name, it's a string. So we can also convert things. Remember, this is 3. It's an integer. And before, we did this. right? We just put it in quotation marks, and now it's a string. You can also take it, let's see. We'll say x is equal to 4. If we say now, this str is going to convert it to a string. And we remember, right, that x was an integer initially, and then we assigned it again. So that's why it's showing up as a string and not as an integer, because remember, if I decide that your name is Fancy Banana Pants, that's like your name now, because I'm in charge of names. Um, so that's what's going on here. Um, we can also since this is a string, since what this contains is a number, we can also convert it back. Remember, my name is Melanie. What's this going to do? It's going to sit in silence forever. You're right. Yeah, we can't do that. OK. Now is when things are going to get super fun. We're going to use, I'm going to get out of the REPL. I can tell that I'm out because of the dollar sign or the single arrow. Um, and I'm going to open up. Let's see. What do we have in here? Greetings. This is a tricky little thing that will open it up in Sublime for me. Okay. Input is really fun because it gives us something um, interactive. So we have this thing, this uh, file. And the first thing that we're going to do is take input, which is a function, and 
it's going to have this data in here. What's your name, little buddy? Um, and we're going to assign whatever we get there to name. And then we're going to print it out here using an F string. So this is in the code editor. This is where we play with our code. And we're going to come back over, and we're going to run it. And we run it by doing what? What's the first, th first thing I type? Python. Here? Three point six. Now? Greetings.py. Is that what I type? Okay. But I'm just going to type gree in tab because I'm lazy. Okay. Here we go. What's your name, little buddy? It's Melanie. Thank you for asking. Oh, hi. How do you do? <laughs> so again, we took this input and saved it in a variable. And then on this line three, we then shoved that variable in um, our hi there statement. So now it looked kind of goofy, in my opinion, this, um, this here, how it says, what's your name, little buddy? And then you just kind of mash your name up against there. Um, it prints out fine, but I think it looks strange. Um, so what we can do is just put a space here. And then when we run it again, now it gives us some space there. And that looks normal. Hi. OK. Now this input, we can store kind of all kinds of things in the input. All it's doing is asking the user, put something in here, and then it's storing that. So let's see what we can do here. Um, I'm going to, again, open up this. That subble just tells, tells my um, terminal to open up this file, but that's specific to me. So I know that might be a little bit like, What's that? So we want to open up this file. So this is add.py. Um, what is, let's see. OK. So what we're doing, the first thing, number one, we're going to take input right, on what that number is. And then that's going to be stored as a variable. Number two, same thing. It's going to ask the user, what number should this be? And then the sum is going to be number one plus number two. And then we're going to print out the sum. Is everyone following? Yes. OK. We're going to run that file, which we do by Python 3.6. And the file name is add. OK. And here we go, interactive. What's the first number you would like to add? Four. Thank you for asking. And the second, we'll do four also. Oh no, the sum of four and four is not 44. I have a child and I've taught her this, so I know now. What's going on? Strings. Yeah, exactly. And we can figure that out. Again, remember when I was saying that um, it can be helpful checking the type? can be helpful. Um, I think this is going to work. For a troubleshooting. You see what we have is two strings. So I put in that print out what the type of these things the inputs are. Um, when you have input, it's automatically a string. So what do we do to fix this problem? Turn them into integers. How do we do that? Mm -hmm. 
int. Okay. What do I do now? Do I close it here? Do I close it at the end? Who thinks we should close it after number one? Yes? Okay. Anything else? Okay. All right. We'll save it and run it again. Yay! That's much more correct than the other one, which was not correct at all. Okay. Another thing we can do is we can actually just make it an int right at the beginning. Boop. Right when we take it in. All right. Okay, so Python also has conditionals. Wait, first of all, who has questions about input? Force a type on it? Um, like, like make it always uh, an integer, like by default? Um, not that I know of off the top of my head, but we did as in that second, um, the second time we did it, we did make it an integer, but at the time of like receiving it from the user. Yeah. Okay. Conditionals. Pointing, yes. Okay. Let's see. So did you do it here or down here on the sum? Okay. Okay. Did you check your type here or here? Okay. Let's try it. Oh. Let's see, we were checking, the question is, right, when you checked the variables, right, the number one and number two? Okay, so let's take a look at that really quick. Yeah, and then it returned you something curious. Right, okay, that's good. Curious is fun. Okay, so we're gonna run this again. We're gonna say four and four. And then at this point in our program, it's taking those in and making them integers but it's still saying string, you're totally right. And the reason is, we have converted it here, but we didn't actually save the variable again as this new thing. So the, init like the initial um, variable here, right, we haven't reassigned it. If we instead, let's see.
Let's try this. Yep. So we're doing this quick little conversion to, to add it together, but we're not actually saying like, and now this shall be an int forever. Okay, cool, yes. It would just shove it together. Yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, totally. Let's see. I think this is what I need to do. Cat, dog. The sum is cat, dog. If you smash a cat and a dog together, that's what you get. Like, that's the takeaway here. I was thinking the same thing. Nope. Okay. Oh, like if you get an error to pop back up and let the user try again? Yes, that is possible. We're not going to do it right now just because that's a, a little bit more advanced than what we're doing right this moment. But we can play with that afterward. But that's a good idea. I mean, if you're writing a program that you don't want to just, like, poop out on someone, I mean, that's fun. But, Okay. Last question on, oh, um, I'm not sure if the keys are different in other programs. I'm using Sublime Text, but I um, select it, and then it's command uh, forward slash. We'll comment it out. Never wanted to do anything. Okay, we're going to look at conditionals now. Whoops, a daisy. So um, these are like questions, right? It's a yes or no question. So I'm going to say, whoops, a daisy. Or I'm going to do this, and y'all tell me what I did wrong. Oh, not that. Okay. There we go. What did I do wrong here? Not in the REPL. Okay. Okay, so here are some conditionals. Is zero equal to one? No, of course not, that's ridiculous. Is zero equal to zero? Yes, it is. Is zero not equal? This is what not equal looks like in Python. Is zero not equal to one? That is true, it is not. Okay, we can do other comparisons as well. Like is zero less than one? Yes, it is, that's true is two greater than or equal to three? No. Is negative one less than zero? Yes, it is. I imagine you all are getting the idea now. Who has a question though? Okay. This one's fun. What are we going to get here? True? Who thinks true? Who thinks false? Who thinks error? I heard you say, I think error, and then you raise your hand, and then we all know. Okay, here we go. It's true. 
Um, and this is done, this comparison is done ascabetically. I think that's how you say that word. So not alphabetically. So little a is not equal to big A. Big A is more important. Also, it's a different character. Sorry? Ooh, let's try that. It's not. What are we doing? Yes, we let's 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 check and see. It's true. So then we can do this, right? But this this is actually true. So little a, little a. Uh, let's find out. Little a is less than big B. Yes. No. Our lower cases are always greater uh, than our upper cases. Um, what about this? Why? Yep. OK. So in Python 2, who uses Python 2 in a different context? Other times? OK. Um, in Python 2, you could compare all kinds of silly things. Like you could compare, let's, let's see this. Is a less than 2? And in Python 3, it's like, well, that's ridiculous. One is a string, one is an integer. What am I supposed to do here? In Python 2, you can actually do this. And it, there's a scheme, I mean, you can look it up. There's a, um, on Stack Overflow, someone wrote it up pretty well. But I, I think it's ordered by like the class of the thing. Like, so an integer is always um, maybe less than a string or something. It was peculiar, but now it's gone. So let's never speak of it again. Okay. We can also check for containment. Is H in hello? It is. But is little h in hello? Nope, it's not. Um, and it doesn't have to be at the beginning. As long as it's in there and it matches exactly, then it's going to say true. Um, oops. Is x in hello? That's false. And we can also do not in if hello does not contain x then it's going to be true who's confused who's exhilarated yeah the TAs are exhilarated okay so those are containment so these um, you know these these questions that we're asking, is x and hello, is you know this greater than this? Um, it's helpful for triggering other behaviors. Um, like we were talking about before, um, if an error comes up, we want it to do this. If an error doesn't come up, we want it to do this other behavior. So these are if statements. So the year is 1999, and if the year is equal to 1999. We're going to put a colon at the end of this if statement. Oh, just kidding. We're going to do that correctly instead. Now we're going to indent. Indenting is incredibly important in Python. It will not be friends with you if you try not to indent. So after this if statement, we do have to indent. Okay, and it's waiting for me in the REPL. It's saying like, are you sure you're done? Because I started this if statement and it wants to make sure. So yes, I'm done. And it's 1999. Any Prince lovers? 
Did y'all catch that? Okay. I wrote it all for you. Okay. So let's say that the year is 2017. So we can do this. Remember, I'm, tab I'm uh, hitting the up arrow to make that magically appear. We can also say, okay, if it's that, we want it to print that. If it's something else, we can have it do something else. So that's a conditional. Okay. It's time to play again, because we like playing. That's what we're doing here. Um, let me pull this up for you. OK, now this is quite a bit. So we're going to take a, a pretty long break here. We're going to do maybe 30 minutes. Um, there's a lot here, so you're not going to get through it all. Um, that's on purpose, so then you can have something to entertain you later. Um, if you get stuck, you, like we just did this, y'all. Oh, and you're cheating now. You did, put the sticky, yes, put the sticky up if you get stuck. Um, questions? Who needs something answered before we get started? Okay. 30 minutes. on that whole time. That's fun. Um, okay. We only have nine minutes left. I There's more material, um, and this website isn't going anywhere, so feel free to, to work through it. Um, but there are a couple of things that I, I want to look through before we go. Um, the first thing, and I'm going to go through these super fast. So when you get stuck later and you're like, what was that thing that we did? Um, I don't know, come find me or hit me up on Twitter or you know, use Stack Overflow or Explore or grab anyone here. I bet, I bet if you grab 10 people, one of them will know what a list is and how to work through it. Don't actually physically grab them. That's a totally different thing. And we don't do that in the Python community because we're awesome. OK. Um, no. Let's see. Fruits. Fruits. I'm hoping that my going super fast isn't going to ruin things. Peaches. OK, so this is a list. This open bracket, close bracket is what a list looks like. We can put anything in a list. So if we, if we print this, there we go. Hey, there it is. Um, let's see. We can also say. Five is clearly not a fruit. I have a young child, and I've learned this from her. But we're still allowed to shove it in there. It doesn't care. Python doesn't care what we put in there. We can even put 
Let's see. We can even put a list in a list. And lists are cool because you can index them, which means that we can grab things from the list if we would like. The index starts with zero. Um, some people like to say it's the zeroth item in the list. Um, that's fun because it makes your mouth look weird and you sound awkward. So here's the zeroth. I think, I don't know what the other one, what other people call it, but anyway. So this is going to give us bananas. That's going to give us five, right? Because we're counting from zero. Zero, one, two. If we want to get the third item in our, or fourth item in our list is that list, right? So we can get that. We can get items from the list within the list by saying we want the list first. That's in the fourth position there with um, index three. And then we can say that. What is this going to give us? I'm going fast, so it's OK if like, you got a little lost in there. We have one, four. Four, four, two. Four, four, two. OK, let's see. Four. OK, cool. So that's a list. And the other thing that we can do in here um, that I wanted to show you, and again, we're going blazing fast right now, but for loops are super fun. Yes. Oh, yes. So this gives us that list that's within it. So we're saying, OK, give me that list. And now, of that list, we're kind of building upon it. Do you see? So we're saying, here's the list, fruits three. Give us that list within the list. And now this other three is going to give us the um, index three. And we start with zero, right? So the zeroth position is one, first position is two, so on. And so it's grabbing um, the third index of that list. Does that make sense? OK. Uh, so the cool thing about lists, let's see, what do we have in our fruits here? Uh, let's do feelings. Happy, excited. Gassy. We all know that's a feeling. So we have this list, and we can loop over it. It's an iterable. We can iterate over it with a for loop. So we can say for feeling and feelings. We're going to move in with spaces, yeah? Print feeling. What do you think will happen here? A circle. I saw a circle gesture with the hand. Yes, circle. Good. What it's going to do is print out all of the items in the list one by one. And this feeling, this is kind of like a temporary vari variable here. We can call it hot dog. As long as you're calling it one thing in the for loop, and then saying that same thing later. Hot dog, hot dog. It's not a hot dog. Those are feelings. But you can call it whatever you want. You can call it x if you want. Um, like I said way earlier in the class, it's helpful to use meaningful variable names. So that way, when people come back and read your code, it makes a little bit of sense. OK, so that was this lists and loops. Um, again, go through there. There's tons of exercises in here. Um, and then the last thing I want to do, sorry, this is rushed, is just say thank you for being here. Um, a couple pages ago that we skipped over, there was some work from Brene Brown, um, who is a shame researcher. Um, and one of the things that she says, it's like one of my favorite things, is that we are all worthy of love and belonging. Um, just as we are. You don't need to change anything about yourself. There's nothing you can do to not be worthy of love and belonging. 
Um, and I think it's such a beautiful, beautiful idea. Um, and so I hope as we go through, thank you, all of them, half of them, as you go through the rest of the conference, if that's something that you can take with you, um, the conference can be a little bit intimidating, I think. Um, there are tons of smart people here, um, and you will always probably feel, can you pass down? Um, feel like someone is smarter than you, um, or more attractive than you, or can levitate better than you can. Um, I have that problem all the time. Pass down. Oops, sorry. Um, and so I'm hoping that can bring you with you. And your very last happy work, don't forget that we said exercise earlier and I skipped right over it, but your very last happy work as you go home is to journal about your experiences here. Um, because when you journal, your brain locks in what has been happening as being something important that you should remember. So if there is something happy and lovely today, um, write it down, take it with you, bury it as deep into your body and your heart as you can. And um, I hope that you will take some Python knowledge with you, but also just love and peace and grace. That is the end of this course. Thank you so much.